think you can just chalk it up to stupidity and incompetence at this point. To all these idiots who are uh, saying that it is by the letter of the law and shit. Are we kidding right here? And I don't think the issue is about incompetence. I mean, or it can be about incompetence because it is selective application of laws. <laughs> Are PGML more addicted to drama than actual fairness of sport? Because we all know what happened yesterday and uh, you can make a lot of reasonings on why it shouldn't have happened. Maybe you can, somebody can make a reasoning of why it was the right one, but uh, I don't want to hear that somebody. Uh, so I never said that. I never said that. <laughs> But let's 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 jump to let's jump to Prayag. Dude, what do you think? I think I think you no, think I said it from the beginning. It's it's unfair. I I yeah. just said something. I'm not gonna say that again. That I feel like maybe Declan Rice should have been Declan Rice should have been smarter. But anyways, forget about that. Not only are we saying that uh, I mean that shouldn't be a low card, and but it is really un- inconsistent from the referee because I just saw a compilation of like instances where players were kicking the ball away and doing all those stuff in front of the same guy in other game, and he didn't give them yellow cards. So why would you do it here? it makes no sense yeah. and maybe it's because the Brighton players started saying it and it just came to his mind but I don't understand why they didn't go to the VAR I don't understand why it was his first instinct to do that and I feel like referees should also be a bit practical in this scenario that they need to understand okay that that was accidental because if you saw the video right the ball hit Declan's feet first so he was startled he didn't understand what was going on he didn't know a free kick was going to be taken right so it was just like it's his instinct he just it was his, his reflex so you should not be giving a card to a player that that who's already on a yellow card. It makes no sense. And the same guy has not done that before. So it doesn't make any sense. So I know nothing is going to come out, come out of it. It is not going to be spoken about within like a week or two. So at this point, mm-hmm. I think we're just wasting our energy. <laughs> now, I, I totally, I totally agree with you, Prayagit. Because I think two points in one is that it seems to me like how can any sane person look at that video and think that they can like instinctively take the ball away to stop a ticket from happening and delaying play, right? It was, it was not, it, it, the ball touched his feet it was an instinctive text okay touch my feet i can it didn't even make make a moment yeah out of play. It, was, it was not even okay it was just touched in it's what you do like if you're randomly going on a road some football comes and hits you you'll be like okay fine yeah i'll touch my feet that's exactly what happened and the fact that you kind of construe that as you're delaying a start or basically going to the technicalities of it goes against the principle of your free-flowing game which pgo exactly in so much worried about because you know if I remember correctly first thing that they had because VAR when it was being introduced it was like it was in discussion for a couple of seasons or so the first thing that they had against introduction of VAR was that it will disrupt the flow of the game what are you doing now what are you doing now by doing this by disrupting the flow of the game mm. I know yeah it started with a fall going on but why are you getting involved in such trivial matters like no one not one player not a Brighton player not a Man United player no one no, no fan who is not a fan of Arsenal would have complained if it was just kind of not looked into but for some reason they have to kind of throw the book at that exact point of time and say that okay no we have to you know this is where we pick on things because the fact is if they're picking on every minor thing I get it but they're not they're not picking on everything they're just basically trying to see where they, they can't help themselves it's just that they're throwing the book at the time where it's not needed and they're just getting into the drama of things it, sometimes it feels like they're just addicted to the drama so much that they can't they just can't get on they just want some narrative to be against the referees I don't know what charge they're going to get out of it I don't know how it's going to help their narrative but it's some drama all the time and the thing is again I'm, at this point I'm reaching but the thing is the more drama is more engagement more viewership more comments and if we get, we're all suckers for this game we're all suckers for this clubs it's only it's only going to keep us enraged and then say okay now we'll tune in now we'll complain more now we'll do something else I don't know if that's what they're playing at it's just so it's just bonkers that they're still kind of doing these things season after season okay first season of VAR I get it second season of VAR I get it oh you're fine tuning yourself but this is the fourth or fifth season of VAR you're still doing this elementary rudimentary misses yeah. where will people back you up why why be in the middle of everything why can't you just kind of you know be a spectator and then just appreciate the game normally? why get into this Bro, I, I, think, have... I think you can just chalk it up to stupidity and incompetence at this point my view on this is that if it can be explained by incompetence that's probably what happened instead of something sinister so 
so there is no system in place so they just act how they feel in that moment which obviously is influenced by maybe the fans maybe their own biases maybe the players on the pitch instead of following some kind of set instruction so this is why these decisions are really inconsistent and it could be that maybe some teams have more influence so referees are uh, less inclined to making harsh decisions against them maybe because of the recapitulation because of the blowback they'll get from that so it could be because that i think that's what's exactly happening here so the reason why these guys haven't reformed is probably because of bureaucracy and politics i don't know what's happening behind the scenes but i think with in yeah go on i was just going to say no, no, that i was just going to make a comment about city but yeah go ahead no, no i was just going to yeah, say I, that I wish, yeah No, no, I was just gonna say that. Look at reactions of Kai Havertz, right? He's still mm. confused what happened. Like he, right now in the <laughs> moment, he's he's confused. <laughs> like he doesn't know what happened. <laughs> Kai Havertz is always confused. Look on his face. But no, yes. but, but like <laughs> anybody around the ball, around the stadium, were basically going to the referee and saying, "Oh, it shouldn't be a red card for Welsh men. It was a mistake." Not saying that it should be a red card for Rice. That's first, right? You, you look at the reaction of mm. people. Secondly, okay, I want to debunk this, right? To all these idiots who are uh, saying that it is by the letter of the law and shit, all of that shit. Was the ball in the position of the foul? No, letter of the law. Then we even didn't follow that. Was the ball rolling? Yes. Did the Brighton players not pick the ball up, spotted it, and then kicked it to Rice? Free kick was taken. Letter of the law. We're good, right? Does that mean free kick was already taken? Yes, of course it was because then Rice was perfectly fine to intervene the ball and kick it out because he was just interrupting the uh, play. And And then lastly, should Veltman not have been sent off for kicking Rice the way he did? So all of those letter of the laws were not followed. But the one letter of the law was followed. That was followed was Rice just touching the ball in the view mm. of him trying to you know delay the play. I mean, are we kidding right here? And I don't think the issue is about incompetence. I mean, or it can be about incompetence because it is selective application of laws. Whenever they feel like they should apply it, and whenever they feel like they shouldn't apply. But I think it is a broader case of main character syndrome of the referees, where they're like, mm. oh, we need to be at the center of the stage. We We need to be talked about. We need to be, you know, influencing the game. If something is happening, we need to be the grandmaster in a pri- in a uh, elementary school where everything needs to be by a certain order. And if that doesn't happen, then you know. We are basically going to fuck people apart. And what baffles me is the referee set a tone for the match, right? Every referee has a way of managing a match. Sometimes they let the fouls go that encourages player to be a little bit more physical. That's how the game goes. Sometimes they let some trivial things go away that encourages people to do those trivial things because then in their head they have a perception that okay, this referee is going to be refereeing the game in that particular way. And that's what they build their sensibility of that moment of that game on. And when a referee just goes against whatever he is, whatever press. Presidency set in the game and just comes up in the fortnight mirror and just does that. I mean, you can't really blame anybody. You can't really blame Rice there because he saw the precedents with Jao Pedro with like another incident in the first half where FP was being lenient. So he was like, "Oh, this is not a big thing. I'm not poofing the ball away. Whatever. It just came and struck me, and then I'm just you know pushing it a little bit further." So I genuinely don't get it, and I feel like this has. I mean, moving on to like it having ramifications for Arsenal. I personally feel like this. A lot of people will say like you know it's just two points, 35 more games to go, and all of that stuff. But the point is, it's not about that. Point is, what are you expecting? Are you expecting Arsenal to be win 35 out of 35? Are you expecting there's no mm-hmm. room ro- room for uh, error here? Are you basically this these instances take away all the room for error for a team like Arsenal who doesn't have the players the caliber of City has, doesn't have the resources the caliber of City has, and expect us to be perfect in each and every game? Because whenever we are not, we are or whenever even if we are, we're screwed like these instances. And then after at the end of the day, after 38 games, if we lose by one point, and if we say that oh it was the Brighton game that fucked us over, we will be like of course. Not you had 35 more games to make up, and I'm like, what? What are you expecting of us? Like, not lose a single game, go 35 games and beat it. That's just an unnecessary and a stupid expectation because all the margin of error is being taken away from us in the initial part of the league. So that's where my main frustration is, more than anything else. 